Now, let me just go over the procedure, summarized. You'll see it since I'm taking the data. Just a couple of notes. Um, this is what you would be doing. So first we'll connect the circuit without, without the box. And when you make the measurement of the voltage without the decade box in, that's called V-naught. So then we'll insert the decade box. It has a resistance R sub B. And then we'll measure the voltage. And we'll call that V1. And we'll do that for various values of the resistance. Okay, from those measurements you can compute the internal resistance and the EMF of the cell for each pair of values, for each uh, value of the what, whatever the decade box was set at and what value of the voltage you got. And then We'll take those and compute the means. And we'll also compute standard error to get an estimate for the uncertainty due to random error, which remember the standard error only gives you and tells you about random error. It doesn't tell you about other kinds of errors. That's another topic I wanted to, to mention that comes up in this lab systematic error. So random errors are one kind of error. The great, uh, an interesting thing about this lab is that we can do system, talk about systematic errors. So random errors are random. Duh. But the idea is that they vary back and forth, up and down, and they'll average out to zero. That's why we take multiple measurements. Because if there's randomness in the process of making a measurement, then over making many measurements, on average, they will average out to zero, and you'll get a better measure of the true, the true value that, you're, that underlies it. So random Random errors vary randomly, and they should average to zero. And the standard error is a measure of how large those variations are. Standard error, which remember is the standard deviation of the mean. You take sample standard deviation and divide by square root of n. Standard error is a measure of the size of random errors. It's the uncertainty. It's a, a quantitative measure of, of the uncertainty. Systematic errors are not random. And now, systematic errors are not always constant. They might be a bias that kind of goes and comes, but generally there is some constant offset. Um, Uh, a simple example you may have seen in Physics 1 is if you're using a ruler that's really old and the end wear has worn off, then it would uh, be shorter than it should be and your measurements will all be off if you bump the ruler up against something to measure it. So in this case, there's a potential for what's called parallax error. Parallax is a systematic error. And it's caused 
by not viewing the dial or the measuring scale or whatever you're looking at straight on. In this lab, I took some photos of the voltmeter to give you data. I also looked at the voltmeter and I read out what I thought the voltage was. And I made a point of looking at the dial straight on. But what I noticed was that uh, after I took the photos that they seemed to not agree. And I think the problem is that when you hold your phone up to make a measurement, especially if it's this way, the camera's over here. So you hold it here, you're aiming it here, but it's really looking from over here and that's parallax hair. If you've seen the movie Wayne's World, you may remember when Wayne does camera one, camera two, camera one, camera two. You can do that, close one eye, close the other eye. The view changes slightly, that's called parallax. Astronomers use parallax to figure out how far it is to a distant star, uh, not a very far away thing, they have to be close enough, but so parallax can be a good thing for astronomy. But in this case, I think there might be parallax error in the measurements and the way to test that idea is you can take the measurements that I called out and can make your calculations. You can also read the dial taken in the photos and repeat your calculations. And if they're different, then that's evidence of a parallax error. And a question you can answer is, is the parallax error larger than the random error? Parallax is a straight, uh, is, is a, is a, a non-random error. And so is there a non-random error that's bigger than the random error? And you should be able to answer that question with the data that we're going to, you're going to get. Okay, what else did I have to tell you? How to take the measurements? Well, we'll show you taking them. How to write the lab report? It's a paper. If you took Physics 1 Lab, you've written these before. If you didn't take Physics 1 Lab, I'll help you, but you basically write a paper with the structure is set by the intermediate lab that we had last time. The one thing I was going to tell you that's different here is you're not going to work with a partner. You'll get the data. You'll analyze it yourself. You'll write the report yourself. I helped collect the data, so what you should do on your lab report where you list your lab partner is uh, list me. and put by video. So lab partner, Eric Myers, by video. Okay, how to get help or ask questions. You can send me email, I'll write you back. You can, um, uh, let's see, the other ways of getting, the other way to do that is you can post a, a question on the discussion board that I've put up in Blackboard and other people can see that question and may have the same question. So don't be shy, you might be helping people out. I will also be on Blackboard Collaborate Ultra with a webcam during the time of our scheduled class and I can answer any questions. We won't collect data, although if you want to watch the videos and ask me questions then, but I'll just, because it's our scheduled time, I'll, I'll be available then. Okay, so time to move on and see the equipment and do, start analyzing the data.